Hamlin towns in Brunswick, by famous Hanover City. The River Weezer, deep and wide, washes its wall on the southern side, a pleasanter spot you never spied. But when begins my ditty, almost 500 years ago, to see the townsfolk suffer so from vermin was a pity. Rats! They fought the dogs and killed the cats and bit the babies in the cradles and ate the cheeses out of the vats and licked the soup from the cook's own ladles, split open from the kegs of salted sprats, made nests inside men's Sunday hats and even spoiled the women's chats by drowning their speaking with shrieking and squeaking in 50 different sharps and flats. At last the people in a body to the town hall came flocking. Tis clear, they cried, our mayor's a noddy, and as for our corporation, shocking. To think we buy gowns lined with ermine, for dolts that can't or won't determine what's like to rid us of our vermin. Rouse up, sirs, give your brains a racking to find a remedy we're lacking, or sure as fate we'll send you packing. At this the mayor and corporation waked with mighty consternation. Who am I? There, in a heap of slain among the rest, two youthful knights they found beneath a load oppressed, of slaughtered foes whom first to death they sent, the trophies of their strength a bloody monument. Both fair and both of royal blood they seemed, whom kings unto the crown their heralds deemed, that day in equal arms they fought for fame, their swords, their shields, their surcoats were the same. Close by each other lay, they pressed the ground, their manly bosoms pierced and many a grisly wound. Nor well alive, nor wholly dead they were, but some faint signs of feeble life appear. The wandering breath was on the wing to part, weak was the pulse that hardly heaved the heart. These two were sisters' sons, and archite one, much famed in fields with valiant Palamon. From these their costly arms the spoilers rent, and softly both conveyed to Thessus' tent. Whom, known of Creon's line and cured with care, he to his city sent as prisoners of the war, hopeless of ransom and condemned to lie, endurance, doomed a lingering death to die. Unaware of what happened, the little girl came joyfully to her grandma's house and knocked on the door. Behind the door, a hoarse voice answered, Is it you? Come in, come in. Now the little girl realised her granny may be feeling ill, and feeling a little worried, she stepped into the house. Granny, what happened to you? Why have you got those large ears? And why have you got those big sharp teeth? And what with them big eyes? This book is a fairy tale in which I am the prince and the princess. I am the king and the queen. I am my own wicked witch and fairy godmother. This book is a fairy tale in which I'm cursed and blessed by others. But finally, I am the fairy finding my own magic. A breeze ruffled the hedges of Privet Drive, which lay silent and tidy under the inky sky, the very last place you would expect astonishing things to happen. Harry Potter rolled over inside his blankets without waking up. One small hand closed on the letter beside him, and he slept on, not knowing he was special, not knowing he was famous, not knowing he would be woken in a few hours time by Mrs Dursley's scream as she opened the front door to put out the milk bottles, nor that he would spend the next few weeks being prodded and pinched by his cousin Dudley. He couldn't know that at this very moment, people meeting in secret all over the country were holding up their glasses and saying in hushed voices to Harry Potter, the boy who lived. What on earth are you doing here? asked Ben. Uh, I mean, what on earth are you doing here, Your Majesty? I like to come here when I can't sleep, replied the Queen. She spoke in that instantly familiar posh voice of hers. Ben and Granny were surprised to see she was wearing a nightgown and little furry corgi slippers. She was also wearing the coronation crown on her head. 
It was the most magnificent of the crown jewels. The Archbishop of Canterbury had placed it on her head when she was crowned queen in 1953. The crown, which dates back to 1661, is made of gold, encrusted with diamonds, rubies, pearls, emeralds and sapphires. It was the most impressive look even for the Queen. I come here to think, went on the Queen. I got my chauffeur to bring me from Buckingham Palace in the Bentley. I have my Christmas address in a few weeks time and I, I need to think carefully about what I want to say. One always finds it easier to think with one's crown on. The question is, what on earth are you two doing here?